Okay. Now, the man, the legend, <laughs> the main point uh, or reference for all of us, struggling with GTM, GA4, and when we want to know more about analytics, Simo Ava. <laughs> he is partner and co-founder of 8BitShip, uh, also co-founder together with uh, his wife, uh, Mary Hava, uh, of uh, an online course platform for technical marketers, yes. Simmer. Thanks, Simmer, to be here. And so, let's start with the question. The or... easy one. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. Uh, could you please give us a picture of the analytics world state of art? So I think that if, you know, it's impossible to start the discussion without going into AI, um, generative AI in particular. And um, you know, I was just talking to uh, Craig Sullivan before uh, we started our, our conference today, or, or Measure Camp today, just bouncing around ideas. It's, it hasn't been like this for so many years. Like, when's the last time we had a bit of technology that people are so apeshit crazy about? Like, when's that happened? I can't remember. Um, and everybody's excited, thinking about what can we do with this? What can we do with this? So I think that that's where it is. And whether you're a, a, a tech fundamentalist like I am, so even, <laughs> even with all the AI and the bells and whistles, I still believe that we, we need to do a good job with the basics, yep. with education and, and with coding and everything. You, can, you can't just delegate everything. Using that AI as a tool um, to help us learn new things, to help us separate the things that interest us from the things that kind of force us to do uh, the mundane tasks um, and using it just to generate insights and ideas. There's just so much innovation going on there right now. Um, imagine having like a, a, a digital assistant that you just dump your data and, and then just have a conversation about it. it sure. I'm not talking about telling you how to do analytics, but just helping them find the blind spots that you might not notice yourself. So I think that when talking about state of the art, that's, where, that's really where it is. Um, and it's going to be just interesting. I think it's just going to be every every single week something new coming out. Um, it's also a bit nerve wracking because you don't know where to look, what to trust, where to place your bets, <laughs> what to invest in. Um, but yeah, it's it's a, definitely an interesting time to be in data and basically any uh, digital medium at the moment. Cool. Um, in these days, everything, as you said, is about uh, ChatGPT, mm. uh, copilots for Microsoft, mm. something like that. So. Uh, you just anticipated something related to how AI could be a good fit for yeah. analytics, but do you have more thoughts about how we can use in a productive way AI for yeah. uh, the industries <clears throat> or for the analytics in general? Well, basically anything where idea generation is necessitated, it, it could be something as easy as help me, you know, help you devise a measurement plan. Yeah. You know, come. Because we, you know, we all hit blocks, we all hit plateaus. Uh, we look at a blank piece of paper and wonder, like, how do we start planning this thing? Uh, we look at a spreadsheet. How do we start? What are the important things to focus on? It's it's pretty cool that we now have a tool that gives us the seed to start from. Um, you mentioned co-pilots, so using um, generative AI for uh, code generation. Mm -hmm. I don't, I haven't been very impressed by the actual code it generates, sure. like the code itself, um, especially when it requires an understanding of an interconnected system. So having um, ChatGPT or Copilot design things around Google Tech Manager's data layer, for example, is often, often a hit and a miss. Yep. But giving them an instruction and having that technology device pro, an, uh, a structure for your code, for example, is super useful. Um, for analytics itself, you know, we've already had it with, with like insight engines. We've had it for a long time, being able to uh, emerge with insights from the data itself, but going a step forward from that to a conversational AI about the data that you are looking at and having that feedback into the data collection itself. Mm -hmm. So AI looking for anomalies or gaps in your data or telling you how you could make this even better from a data quality point of view. So it's really just about Think of it like you have someone who is a multi-talent prodigy <laughs> polymath. What would you ask them? Yeah. So that's the question you can turn to AI about and then take that response as a starting point for your work, not as the end product itself. Yeah. So I think there's a lot of, lot of stuff there. Something like uh, put out the magician for... <laughs> yes, exactly. Yes, yes, absolutely. Okay. And another question is, uh, which suggestion would you give to... Uh, a guy that want to 
become a data analyst or mm. digital analyst in the um, analytics industry for tech or for a pure data analyst, uh, uh, whatever you want to go to this, uh, yeah. to this way? Um, I think that's a good question to ask ChatGPT, actually. Um, <laughs> I would say when I, when I think about what are the positive qualities of people around me who are just so good at this work and this industry, I think that one thing that unites all of them is just uh, an insatiable curiosity. So uh, coming into the industry with an open mind, looking for things you don't know yet and mm -hmm. trying to figure out the questions to unravel those things, I think that's, that's the number one thing. And, and curiosity is of course something you can practice and, and, and nurture. Um, so trying to come in with that, if you come into the industry uh, with a fixed understanding of the world that you refuse to budge on and a fixed understanding of your skills that you refuse to refine, I don't think you're going to like it very much. Uh, data and analytics by nature is about discovery and serendipity and, and reinvention. So I think that if you want to enter this industry, it's very useful to come in with a certain amount of naivety as well. Mm -hmm. uh, you you are not entering a place where everything is figured out for you. Yep. Um, and then also coming in, like Measure Camp is, is wonderful, but if you look at the people presenting here, they are all often established yeah. people. And what we need more are the newcomers who are just entering this industry, because I think that we have a risk of complacency, um, getting stuck in a rut with our own skills and our own mindsets. So I think that if you are, and I'm talking to you, if you are considering <laughs> a, a career in analytics, please do. And please come with your own inventions, your own imaginative mind, and, and help us break through the plateaus that, especially the old timers and the seniors in this have kind of got stuck with. <laughs> As we need you, because we are, it's difficult to yes. find people. Help us. <laughs> please. Help us. <laughs> please. <laughs> okay. And the. Main question, I think, uh, because it's uh, related with the, the, the previous one, if you could tell us more about your, uh, I can say, academy, Team Simmer, or yep. what you want to call it, and because uh, uh, in our agency, everyone is uh, signed up mm -hmm. <laughs> with your... Uh, this is a sponsored talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's very, very useful. We found yeah. everything uh, a good fit for us, but we want to know more about your... Yeah. Again, academy, maybe. Oh, yeah, of course. So uh, Simmer is, a, is a, 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 an online course platform we found, founded with my wife. And Mari is the, the CEO and I'm an instructor there. And um, we do courses in technical marketing. Um, and, you know, from the beginning, we've had a core set of values mm -hmm. that we believe in. Uh, we are, of course, a family and we're also business owners. So we find it easy to not compromise on our values because we will be compromising our family as a unit as well. <laughs> Um, but on top of that, look, when it comes to Simmer, for example, all I really care about is that people learn. Yep. That's, that's all I care about. I don't, you don't have to do it at Simmer. Of course, I would love it if you do. And we try to build our courses so that we can benefit from. I would like, if I think about our brand, what I would like is for us to inspire people to look anywhere for education. Uh, go to whatever source of information you find on the web and use that. And that's one of the reasons why, you know, we are going to be investing more and more into just free content. Yep. Um, I come from Finland and Finland is basically a socialist uh, place with uh, free education. And this is, this is like, <laughs> like my wife would kill me, but, you know, I would love for all of our content to be free. I hate that we have to ask, but we have to keep the business running. But what I would like is to give back to the community. Yeah. Everything I have learned from has come from free resources. So that's why we're doing a lot of free content as well in the future. Uh, we will still have our paid offering, of course, and we're going to do some really cool courses in the future. But I just want people to learn. And I don't, I'm okay if you go to a competitor, go, go, go <laughs> out there. There's lots of really great course providers out there. Um, but of course, we would be happy to have you at Simmer, and we do have a really strong community as well, yeah. where we hope that people help each other. But I just want people to learn, man. Like that's the only thing that, <laughs> if if I get if I get, if we get some money out of it, great. If we don't, at least we'll have um, the knowledge that somebody was inspired through Simmer to maybe learn something from our free content or going to someone else and getting some education there. Yeah, as well. you did a lot of things for the community uh, yeah. with your blog, uh, free courses that you. Yeah. 
uh, run we a webinar yeah. in the pandemic uh, yeah. Um, yeah, for years. Sure. Uh, and we are really uh, hopeful to have you uh, in the community. You run a massive understanding how to use certain type of tools yeah. and mindset. Yeah. Because I think tool can help about people at first. Yeah. So uh, it's something that we are very grateful for thank having you. you in the community. Thank so you. thank you so much thank for you, your interview. And for you, stay tuned for another episode to Data Never Lies. Thank you so much again, Simon. Thank you, Enrico. See ya.